Okay, thank you, Georgia. So, we're talking about UICC 8, which is, um, this term is from, coming from me, a further fine tuning on what we did in the UICC 7. So what is, just to go back, uh, what you've gone through all is the difference between UICC 6 and UICC 7, because a comparable thing is going to happen to you, um, to all of us, from UICC 7 to UICC 8. So this is what we had, the difference between 6 and 7. We subclassified T1 into T1A and T1B. We subclassified T2 from T2A to T2B. We reclassified T2 being larger than 7 centimeters as T3. We reclassified T4 being nodules in the same lobe into T3 and reclassified a pleural or pericardial fluid as M1A instead of T4. And then for M1, we reclassified the nodules in the same lung as T4 and metastasis in the other lung as M1A and metastasis outside the thorax as M1B. Okay, so this is what we're currently working with. And now we're going to have the revised 8th edition of the TNM staging, which has been done by the IAS, IASLC staging committee uh, and prognostic factors committee. So just to give you an idea how this work goes, as you can see for the 7th edition, which was in fact the first one that was done by the IASLC, 96 DID, the then a committee, databases, finances, CRAP, which is the statistical organization in Seattle, and a data set, registry, number of publications, and then in 2010 we had the seventh edition in place and working. This one is other tumors included, prospective phase and a new data set, registry of new cases over a time period of four years, incorporating cases from this period, which means Quite a lot of them were not PET staged. Then the analysis of the data, and then the publications, quite a few are already available and all free online in the Journal of Thoracic Oncology. And then beginning of next year, you will all have to work with the eighth edition, pending that it will be agreed on by the UICC and um, the other committees that deal with this, such as the American uh, committee as well. So, what's the committee like? They are built up by several specialists. Thoracic surgery, oncology, pathology, statistics, pulmonology, radiotherapy, and then epidemiology, of course, data managers, genetics, and persons for coordination. Where do these people come from? The largest groups come from Europe and North America but also quite a substantial number from Asia, Australia, and South America, smaller ones. So this is what the staging committee is now from the ISLC. So it's not only lung, which was when it started, it has a chairperson, several subcommittees, but now we have also incorporated mesothelioma, 2008 that started, and we have thymoma and esophageal cancer. What I'm going to talk about is only this part, so only lung. These are the cases that have been incorporated in the next, so in this one, uh, analysis. So more than 94,000 cases, the data have been entered into the system. Coming from Europe, Asia, small part relatively from North America, Australia and few from South America. So there might still be some regional differences based simply on the way the data were collected and the area where the data come from. What type of databases are this? The majority is retrospective. Consortiums, registries, surgical series, institutional series. Few are prospective. 
What type of treatment went these patients through? The majority is surgery. A little bit less than 10% had chemotherapy and 1.5 had radiotherapy. And then there's some overlap with more than one treatment per patient or even three treatments per patient. So looking at the T component, the populations used to analyze are the ones with pathological staging and the ones with clinical staging, done separately. So the groups are P, T1 till 4, N0, M0, R0, or any M, N, or any R, or any N and any R. And the clinical staging is any T from 1 to 4, N0 or any N, but all stages M0. And then the analysis is done in a union multivariate way, adjusted for histological type, region, age, and gender. All these details will not be shown on the slides, but they have been taken into account. Okay, so this is the outcome of the T analysis, and it states that every centimeter counts, although the way it is described, it's more like every millimeter counts. Uh, and as you heard in the previous presentation, there is some uncertainty about what is the uh, reproducibility of every millimeter. The tumor size is used as descriptor in all T categories. The Plural invasion was introduced in UICC 7 and will not be changed in UICC 8, despite the fact that there are a num number of publications which show that there might be some difference uh, related to tumor size and plural invasion. It was found that T2 and T3 endobronchial, so stage as endobronchial, have the same prognosis. The same for atelectasis, they have the same prognosis. T3 invasion of the diaphragm has the same prognosis as a T4. And T3 mediastinal pleura was in the database that is used, very rarely seen. So here we go for the changes now. This is seventh edition, T1A which by definition was one, uh, uh, no, zero to one. It's now been split up in T1A and T1B. So one centimeter, one and two. And then what used to be T1B here will now be T1C. So we have now within T1, we have three groups, A, B, and C, based on size. Then T2A was, Three to five, okay. Three to four remains T2A, but between four and five will be T2B. The previous T2B shown here, which was five to seven, will now be T3. Larger than seven, used to be T3, will now be T4. The bronchus and the atelectasis, as I said, was T3, will now be T2. Invasion of the diaphragm, T3 will now be T4, and this will not be used. So we have a further split up here in the T, and moving some who used to be T2 to T3 or to T4. And if you look at all the curves that are related to this, we now have more curves than we had before. We had six here, and now we're going to have seven here, and these are nicely split curves, as you can see. So these have nice uh, p-values and hazard ratios between them. So this works on the database used. We go to N. So this is what we have. N0, 1, 2, and 3, and nicely split curves. And that is the same in the database described by Asamura, very nice uh, p-values, very nice hazard ratio if you compare N1 to N0 or N2 to N1 or N3 to N2. So this is very nicely split.
if you go to the pathologically staged cases, then there's a new way to describe that. This is, so this is only for pathologically staged. N1 single will be, have the name N1A, N1 multiple will N1B, N1 single N2, so the so-called skip metastasis, and I think those are the, patient, uh, the, the tumors that grow in the upper lobes and have a first stage of lymph node involvement, a lymph node in the mediastinum instead of in the hilum, described as skip metastasis, N2A1, then N2 single N2 plus an N1 is N2A2, and N2 multiple N2 is N2B, and these in the database split very nicely, although N2A1 is the same prognostically as N1B. So this here is the same as that. On the clinical data, this differentiation is not possible because the data are not there. So what they did with the database, they looked at it and it has exactly the same outcome, very nice p-values, very nice hazard ratios, and it more or less confirms that what was found in the previous um, UICC, so number seven, will be used again in eight. So the recommendations will be, we will keep the descriptors as they are, and the proposal is to use new descriptors for prospective testing, as I mentioned, PN1A, PN1B, then PN2A1, PN2A2, and PN2B. So that will be used for a prospective database. Then, as you remember, in UICC 7, for the first time we split up M1 into two groups, M1A and M1B. And this is everything that is incorporated in M1A. So plural pericardial nodules, contra or bilateral tumor nodules, plural or pericardial effusion, multiple M1A descript descriptors. And as you can see, these curves are more or less overlapping each other. So there's no p-value between them. Okay, so this group as a whole remains as it is. Then we go to M1B, which was the category of patients who have a lesion outside the thor thorax. And then you can see here, M1B single organ lesion, M1B single organ slash multiple lesions, M1B multiple organs. And there's a split. These two go more or less together, M1A, M1B, but here there's a difference. So prognostically there seems to be a difference. And for that reason, M1A will stay as it is because there was not much difference between the different subgroup within M1A. M1B will be now only single metastasis in a single organ, and M1C will be multiple metastasis in a single organ or metastasis in several organs, okay? So then, breaking that down into grouping like stage one, two, three, four. It's been done by Peter Goldstraw and published um, in January this year in the JTO. As I said, this paper is also free available online. And if you group that in a nice color schema, then you have it here. So this is new, 1A, 1, 1A, 2, 1A, 3. We have now a 4B and a 4A, and we have now 3A, 3B, but also 3C, okay? All based on getting and combining things together. I try to do it in a little bit different way to make it a little bit clearer. So this is 
the whole thing and what is the change now from what we have in UICC 7 to UICC 8. And what you can see here, this is new, as I said, so a new term for this as well here, and in fact also here, because 3C is also new. This should have been a red box as well. What is going to have a lower stage than it had before? That are these four. So the endobronchial slash atelectasis cases, as shown here, based on size and N category, so 2B is going to be a 1B for this one, so N0, 2, 2A. 3A was going to be a 2B from, for N1, T, 2A. T, 2B, N0 from 2B to 2A. And here from 3A, again, 2B. So some have a somewhat lower stage. But quite a few have a higher stage or a newer stage. So the higher one is shown here, clearly, 3A instead of 2B, again 3A, and here 2As, all going to be 2Bs, or, and 2B is going to be 3A. Here's the new category, 3A is going to be 3B, and here 3B is going to be 3Cs, as well here. So it's got a lot of work to change that all in the databases that will be prospectively filled in. A lot of work for the data managers on this. So for the stage groupings, as I said, these are the curves nicely shown here. Clinical, we have, uh, I think, 10 curves now. Even 11, we have 11 curves. And this is for uh, the pathological, nicely split. So, what was the seventh is here, it's going to be the eighth is this. For clinical, pathological here, it's going to be that. So the take home messages are even more relevant to tumor size, despite the fact that radiologists have a certain limit in what they can do. Reclassification of some of the T descriptors, validation of the present N descriptors, Acknowledgement of relevance of quantification of nodal disease for a prospective registration. Three metastatic groups being 1M groups. And more stages for a better prognostic stratification. This is it. Um, I'm happy to answer questions.